So it appears as of today, InfraGuard has officially been hacked. Um, I was looking at LinkedIn for, I was about to go live stream and I saw this article from, from, from Krabs on security. I follow Brian Krabs. Everybody should be following Brian Krabs. But if you don't know what InfraGuard is, it is a partnership between private companies, major corporations, small businesses, and the FBI to share information to protect the United States critical infrastructure from terrorists, whether it be a foreign or domestic. And each InfraGuard chapter, of which I was a former president of one of the InfraGuard chapters, um, they have an FBI coordinator, an FBI direct contact, and sometimes it can be a, just an FBI employee, or sometimes, sometimes it can be an FBI agent who is your direct contact as a president and also serves as the overseer of the organization. Um, I know a lot about the portal. The reason I know a lot about the InfraGuard portal, and I'm going to tell you about the details here, is because I actually had the pleasure of meeting the person who designs the, the portal, a very awesome individual. And I know some of the challenges they had with the portal and the evolution. So the portal was originally hosted on FBI servers. Uh, and this has probably been about five years ago that I kind of was that involved with the organization. And so it was very secure. And one of the biggest issues that we faced with InfraGuard is because it was so secure that it was very difficult to communicate, to grow, to 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 basically network within the portal. And it's very true what this article says is like within InfraGuard, you have a lot of people who are very more, I guess, more security minded. So these are the people who are actively like receiving information. And we all did from the FBI, Homeland Security. And it's not classified information, it's declassified, but sometimes it's sensitive information that's not shared with the public. But this news right here is very shocking. And it kind of like was like, wow. And I was like, a little bit sad because let me explain the details. So what they did is when you when you join Infogra, I know this process because I've sat there and I served two years as the president, one year as the vice president, and then um, uh, maybe a year after that, I served as the, the immediate past president who advised the current president of the chapter that I was a part of. Um, so anyway, when you join InfraGuard, you have to be usually it used to be that you could be affiliated with any organization that was part of the 16 different critical infrastructures. OK, and so if you were a part of any of those, you could join the organization. But if not, um, then you were denied and everybody who joins go through goes through FBI background checks. Sometimes those can take up to three weeks. Uh, sometimes they can take up to, I don't know, uh, three, three months or so. The process actually got longer uh, as time went on while I was president. So um, either way, everybody that joins InfraGuard is vetted. And so what it's saying here is that what the hacker did is they used the like the identity uh, and the email address of somebody who was a CEO of a major corporation, somebody who they thought had a high probability of getting approved. And as a result of that, they were able to go through the approval process and the FBI approved, approved it. And honestly, I would hope that this would be something that FBI would be able to to um, detect because this does go to like the FBI's top secret side. And there's a lot of details about that. I don't want to be careful what I say, but it does go and it does get a true FBI background check. And so I guess from from for in their defense, there's possibly no way that they would have known that the email address and stuff that of the individual that was applying was hacked. But they also managed, I think, and they didn't specify in the article how they were able to get access to his phone. But it does do MFA, but they were able to choose the option instead of using the app, which uh, honestly, thinking forward, like it really probably would be great if InfraGuard had their own app or use one of the, the, the industry standard apps like Okta or Duo or something like that, or something that they developed that's even more secure. But they were able to, be able to use the SMS option, which allowed them to be able to intercept, I guess, that that MFA code and log into the system. Once in the system, they were able to use the API to pull all of our <laughs> information from the portal. And now that is up for sale on uh, raid form. If you don't know what raid forms, they used to be the old one. Like I remember raid forms. I was introduced to it when I first started uh, getting training on hacking. I went to SANS class and and I think that's where we ended up learning about raid forms. But then there's a new one. That's uh, replaced raid forms. Apparently, the FBI's infiltrated raid forms, which a lot of you notice you don't hear a lot about the dark web and stuff like that anymore, because the reality is that 
Uh, a lot of bad actors have moved on to apps like Signal or something like that because because the FBI and law enforcement has been able to infiltrate uh, the dark web and, and, and then places like Rayform. But there's this new one that I just learned about today when reading this article where they're now posting it and it's up for sale for fifty thousand dollars. And the way that this happens is they basically post it for sale and then they have escrow. And what that means is that. They have an escrow broker or something like that, but the money goes to the person they're escrow and then you get the, you give them the, whatever you've hacked. And then they verify that the information that you gave them from the hack is legitimate. And then if it is, then they give you the money and they give the other person the, the hack data or the data that's been leaked or stolen and stuff like that. And that's just to ensure that this information is is not uh that he's not ripped off as, as the hacker and the hacker's name is usdod as it points out in the article this is on linkedin so you can go find it you can find me on on linkedin too uh and uh, under technology interpreters and stuff like that i'm going to share this article on that page but this is pretty serious and um and a lot of our information just another way our information has been leaked and here's the name of the pom 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 Perin, pom -pom -perin. I guess that's how it is. But this appears to be a new place where they've left raid form and now they're on the way to sharing information in this site, as well as there are many others that we may never know about. Uh, but this is a big deal. I strongly encourage you to check out the Technology Interpreters uh, LinkedIn page if you want more details. Give us a like and a follow. But I've been thinking about talking about InfraGuard. I want to encourage everybody to join InfraGuard. I think it's a great organization. But um, I think there's going to be a little bit of fallout as a result of this. So I'll be monitoring and kind of seeing how this affects me as an InfraGuard member and uh, somebody who's very, very big fan of the organization. So anyway, this was helpful. Hope that you enjoyed it. Great information uh, for me. Hope it was great for you. And don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more cybersecurity. Uh, and I'm doing the other cybersecurity training right now. So please subscribe if you're interested.